So hello everyone. Uh, my name is Victor Tozo, and I'm here to talk about spice. Uh, I about me a little bit. I'm, I'm I'm I was born and raised in Brazil, sunny Brazil, and I came all the way to Czech Republic to work on this project for Red Hat. It's been almost almost three years now, and. Yeah, I'm truly happy to be here to talk with Spice with you, and thank you for interest in, in being here. So first of all, uh, how many of you know something about Spice? Okay, two people, that's fine. And uh, about you two, do you use it frequently, or no, sometimes? Yeah, okay, okay. So, yeah, the scope of this presentation is not going to de to go deep in, in the implementation on how Spice works and or, or a really low level. It's just like a high overview, so it's fine for everybody. I I, I hope. Uh, I don't plan to take all the time that we have here. This presentation was planned to be like 20 minutes, 30 minutes. So feel free to raise your hands anytime to ask questions as they come. So first of all. What is Spice? So Spice is a, is a way to seamless connect to some remote device, some remote uh, machine. It could be a bare metal machine. It could be a virtual machine. Uh, our main focus usually is virtual machines. It was designed for that. But uh, there is several ways to connect to bare metal as well. So in these two images, quite small, but uh, you have uh, from Windows and from Linux, you are connecting to different two, two different VMs there. Uh, from Windows to a different Windows with spreadsheet or Linux with GNOME running. Here from Linux, connecting to different Windows. And the main point of Spice is being able to uh, use this virtual machine seamless, right? like, like it was your real machine right there. So you can play video, uh, share files, listen music, uh, yeah, redirect your USB. So that's our main goal. Now to talk about Spice, uh, it's important to divide it in four different components, uh, which are uh, the client, which is the Spice application that connects to this uh, remote uh, machine. Uh, the server, which is the library used to expose this machine, right, in a way that the client can connect. The guest, which is the machine itself. And the protocol, which is how we define all those components to communicate with each other. Uh, so the SPICE protocol uh, will define a set of channels, a set of uh, interfaces that uh, the server will then uh, expose uh, to the client. So the server usually uh, connects to this virtual machine and takes all this information and basically uh, provides these this interfaces to the client. Now, we have, for instance, the display channel which is basically what you see, or the, the, the drawing. Uh, the input channel uh, could be the keyboard, the mouse, so you can interact with it. Uh, cursor channel, which is basically to send the shape position of the mouse and the, in, and the position itself. Uh, sound channel, uh, actually there are two channels, the playback channel and the record channel, so you can do input and output. Uh, and USB channels uh, that you can, for instance, redirect flash drives, uh, webcams, and any other device. Yeah. In this presentation, uh, we are mainly focused on the display channel to understand how it works and the optimizations that we did uh, in the last uh, years or so. So, but if you have any other questions, uh, in regard to other channels and how it works, I'm, I'm happy to take them. So, Spice Display, uh, how it works. Uh, 
what what does it what what does the server uh, do here is that it takes all the images from the guest and have a way to send it to the client. So the client will just take the image, and server is the one that will send it to the client. Now, how usually it works in a bare metal machine? You just want to you have your application. It will do. It, you want to, it to do some drowning and some rendering. So usually it asks for the driver, to, the video driver, the, to do the to do that to do the rendering for you. But uh, when you are talking about remote, uh, there is no real uh, need to do the draw to do the rendering on the remote machine. So what happens is that uh, the video driver uh, will provide these images to uh, Spy Server, which then will send it to the client. So uh, basically, it, uh, it's like that. Uh, you get any any update that you have, it will be sent to the client. Now we start to think about some optimizations there. So if you have just an update, do you want to send it everything? So in this, this example, it's like, yeah, I'm sending that image plus the whole background, which is not really uh, bandwidth resource uh, smart, right? We just need that part, that position that is being updated to be sent. So. Besides that, we also can do some compression on the image itself. So that's what Spice usually do in the display channel. You just take what is being rendered uh, in the guest, comp maybe compress that image, and then send it to the client. And then I do have a small demo about it. So uh, here I have a remote viewer, which is a client, a Spice GTK client, and also VNC client. I'm connecting to a machine here locally, and I'm passing this argument at, at, in the in the. Oh, you cannot see it. Can you? Yeah, that's better. Uh, yeah. So GTK debug updates. So what does it do? Our client is a GTK based client. So with this argument, we can just say, hey, every time that you update something, uh, give me some information about, about it. So you see it's a uh, red. Uh, yeah, you see in the top right, the, every second, there is a update in the screen. So basically, that's what happening. The guest updates that, provides this information to the, to the server. It sends just this, that part. So it's very. Uh, good bandwidth wise and you can see if I move my mouse here every time that there is an update there will be something yeah because it's client side drowning ah yes so the question was uh, why there is no drowning for the mouse so you see that we are updating the guest there but the mouse is not so what happens is that the spice tries to, this is a smart way to avoid uh, showing the delay that happens between the client and the guest. So we just get the position, and through the cursor shape, we also know the shape of the mouse, and we do the drowning on the client side. Uh, so this is on top of everything. Uh, so that's why. Uh, this is like the widget itself being updated, but the mouse is on top of that. So that's the reason. You see that if I, uh, you see that the mouse, does not change here beca because it's like the client side of mouse, right? So, good question. So, that's generally how it works. But now, yeah, I had a video here. You see a lot of dates here. So, my intention was to show you a video being playing the guest. Maybe I don't have internet. Just a second.
So you can foresee what will happen. When a video is, is, is being played, what will happen is a lot of updates in that region. Yeah? So, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, it becomes a little bit hard to optimize everything because it's a lot of updates being done. It's just raw image at this point. So what can we do about it? So basically, if we have a lot of updates in the same region on the display on the guest, we can just convert it to a stream, which is made for this, basically. So Spice does have uh, MJPEG support for several years, but that's not really uh, bandwidth-wise good, or it does not. It's not really uh, something new or uh, useful for different kind of type of clients. So with JStreamer, we just got support for VP8, VP9 as well, H.264, and it becomes very easy to expand that to new features, to new video codecs. But JStreamer, so do you guys know what JStreamer is? Uh, there, there is anyone? Yeah? OK, cool. So just a, a basic overview. JStreamer is a framework for multimedia applications. And if there is two takeaways from JStreamer, is that it's a pipeline based, which it means that it's very flexible. So if you want to, to build a, a, a pipeline for the co to encode the video stream, a video stream in which is our case, after you get it working, we just need to move something and replace it, and then we can get a different video codec, a, a div di totally different video stream. And also, it's very easy to stand because of that. Because if you just need something, a new plugin, for instance, uh, you don't need to reinvent the wheel and write everything else, just that plugin that you need. Uh, yeah, basic, uh, uh, basic run for JStreamer is this JStreamer launch. So it will provide this. I can show you quickly as well. Like this. Yeah, it's very cool that you can do a lot with it already. Like there is this other pattern as well, and this this pattern is called Snow, and it's very nice to know about it because you know it's like analog TV in the back old days. And why it's so interesting is because for this is a nightmare for video codecs, right? So it means that uh, it's like the worst case for trying to encode a stream. So that's uh, something really nice to always use for testing and so on. So how it works with us, uh, basically it's, it's about the same thing. Uh, we get all the images, but in the host, in the Spice server, and then we use a pipeline, in, in uh, JStreamer pipeline, to convert those images in a video stream. Uh, yeah, so basically the three main uh, plugins that we use is this app source, app sync, and video encoder. And that means that we just need to change video encoder to change it to different uh, stream types and then we can send it to the client. In the client, uh, basically, is just the opposite. We get the video stream, and then we use the video decoder to get the image, or several images, and then we can just draw it on the client. Uh, yeah, that was what, how we were doing, but in JStreamer, actually, they have a, for this kind of applications, they have a generic plugins called Playbeam, for instance, that do everything. So you just need to provide them the, some, 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 some input, and they will do the decoding. They, can gen, they, they, they deal with the, you don't need to deal with video decoder, for instance. It will find it automatically and do it uh, almost by itself. So that's, that's something new and, uh, in our latest release on the client. And it's very nice also because it can, uh, without effort, uh, support uh, video uh, accelerated, so hardware accelerated for decoding. Uh, we, you just need the plugins and the driver uh, are capable of that, and, and of course the hardware itself. So, uh, streaming with Spice, who benefits with it? So. Yeah, as I mentioned before, we just had MemJPEG, and that's not much useful. Because if you think about, like, uh, we do have web clients, for in instance. And 
there is like a lot of huge support for H.264, VP8, VP9, and they usually are working in the back end to do hardware decode itself as well. Uh, other thing clients like Raspberry Pi or these small uh, low-end machines also usually do have some sort of uh, hardware decoding. So if we can just send them the right video stream, they will have a better uh, uh, they will have a better uh, interface with Spice, right? They, it will be uh, more smooth the usage and so on. Of course, the CPU usage will go down a bit because of that. So I do, so this presentation before I did with a friend of mine and we had two desktops and we did a whole desktop streaming I connected to his desktop and so on. But uh, I was not really in the mood to come from Czech Republic here with two, desk, two, two laptops. So I just recorded Let's see, yeah, I can do it with, uh, yeah, the, the user, the user, the use, uh, the common, uh, the common uh, test case usually is for spicy Tux, right, Tux Rays. So this, this is streaming H.264, the whole desktop, and yeah, it works quite well, and it's using a few new features uh, from upstream that uh, just got into Spice protocol. No, Virgil is here for quite some time, but uh, Virgil only works locally. Yeah, it, it works. It, wo it works quite well. But this is uh, actually uh, guest streaming using uh, PCI pass-through. So the card goes to the guest, we get that buffer, use it for, for streaming. And yeah, and it, 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 it's this, that in Spice protocol just got accepted. And hopefully in the f near future we have uh, uh, an, another component that will do it on the guest that might do for Intel, uh, NVIDIA, and maybe others. Mm. Yeah, so for the future, we do have yet a lot of work. Uh, I will start from, from below, actually, which is a lot of great importance. So Spice remotely works with uh, under TCP. And for real-time video streaming, it's not really uh, good because of the X on, on, the, the, on the protocol. So we are really considering going for a new uh, type of channel that will use uh, RTP on top of UDP. So we hope to gain some, uh, some so reduced latency and so on. Uh, we do need some way to, we have those things implemented, but they don't work quite well. Uh, a way to do dynamic changes in the stream itself. So for instance, uh, you, are remote, you are trying to stream a 4K display which is a lot of data, even for the coding, sometimes even hard for hardware decoding. So if it's not working well for the client, it's not good at all. We need to send some information to the, to the server that uh, it's dropping a lot of frames, for instance, and the server should use it as input to change it to a lower quality or something like that. Uh, so we are just in the stage of getting everything in some good, like, working well, and then we are going to work on those things. Uh, better handling for hardware encoding and decoding uh, with JStreamer. Uh, so as I said, now in the client side, we just got this uh, PlayBeam, which does al almost everything for us. So if you, if you have VAPI plugins and Intel-based system, it will just work. But uh, if you have a different uh, uh, processor, maybe uh, any NVIDIA card, uh, it's something that uh, it needs to be developed even in JStreamer itself, like a new plugins or something that needs to get uh, more mainstream. And hardware encoding, it's, it's long, long run. It's, it, it will take some time because it's something that we are not working on right now. Uh, we are working with different uh, uh, perspective for now, so this will take even at least uh, another year to be uh, in a, in some interesting shape. 
yeah, and that's it. I think I special thanks for Code, Code Weaver guys, the Francois and Jeremy, because they were the ones that uh, actually brought this J Streamer code to Spice. Uh, check them, check them, the, 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 the site of them. They do some interesting uh, stuff. And Pavel Grunt, which was my friend, and we did this presentation before. He is my friend, and we did the presentation before, and part of this slide is thanks to him. And yeah, that's it. Do you have any questions, or do you want to? It depends on your use case. So uh, it depends on what you're comparing as well. There are some presentations that compare all of them. They're, all of them have some benefits and some drawbacks. So Spice is really cool. There, there are several, well, I, I'm biased, right? I, I, I work for Spice, so I will say, hey, Team Spice. But there are uh, pros and cons in every, every aspect. Uh, why you are going to choose this? I think you have to consider the, the possibilities on what they provided to you. So uh, I don't know if you want to compare some. For instance, I, I, I did not try any proprietary version so far. Uh, I know, for instance, there is uh, a few. Uh, they do very well in, in hardware encoding, hardware decoding. They have, uh, there are companies, huge companies just based for this. So they will provide better solutions that are proprietary while we are uh, open uh, free software. Uh, so yeah, it depends. If you want to do, for instance, 4K rendering on a tablet, Spice will not be for you now. Yeah? Yeah, basically, if, yes, yeah, that was not a question. It was, he was saying about uh, how Spice works well with USB, for instance. So, for instance, I, yeah, I, I fixed some bugs uh, on USB, for instance. Uh, there is this guy, he was redirecting his webcam across the ocean. So, from, I don't know, I think Czech Republic to North uh, America. And, yeah, it was a huge leak, uh, a lot of memory being uh, used. And, but yeah, in general, you can just do it like that. You just redirect your webcam, connect to uh, Skype if you want, or other things. Uh, we have shared folders. We have uh, uh, this audio synchronization with video. I don't know. We have a, a few features that I, I think it's nice. Yeah. yeah. That's correct. It depends on your distro. In Fedora, for instance, we provide it. Uh, it's building. It's built with it. So when you download the package, it, it usually comes together. It also it also works for Windows as well. So your Windows, you have you need the USB DK. Uh, it's a different uh, thing. And then it uh, you can share your your USB devices from Windows uh, client to any guest. Yeah. So the, yeah. So the question was if uh, with uh, Spice and JStreamer, if we do have a possibility to not stream the whole desktop, it actually yes. It uh, it depends on on configuration. So we have three types of configuration in the host. So there are actually several solutions for streaming. We can do a guest side streaming. So we have some someone in the guest that will provide this from. Uh, maybe some uh, device in the guest that has this frame buffer and maybe even encoded it so we can just use it. And we have the host side, which is this. And the host side, the, the host side streaming, uh, the protocol, it's based on that. It can, it can actually, if you have two videos being played, it will be two different streams. Uh, it's usually like that. So, 
So yeah, that's actually the default. Yeah, if you use different, so for instance, for connecting to bare metal, we do have this X, X11 spice, which works only on XORG. And it does using XORG buffer to stream everything. And that's only the whole desktop. But if you are talking about virtual machines, it's more flexible. Yeah. There are there are mobile of, 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 uh, oh, really? yeah it's it's it, it, it's it's not supported for us it's from community right. yeah but they but they work quite well actually uh, last year there were uh, a company I think uh, a company that was bought from Telefonic I think and they provided uh, two more clients a web client that's not our not our Spice HTML5 it's a different one and they have a they own uh, demo that runs on the guest, which does a lot of optimization, so it works quite well. And also, uh, I think Android and iOS, I think iOS as well, uh, uh, client. So that's, I, I, I did not check, sorry. Yeah, no, yeah, for JStreamer, I know that they, their client, I think it's based on SpyCTK, which is the library that you use JStreamer in the client, but, uh, but I don't think at the point that they released this, we had JStreamer on the code. So maybe maybe not. JStreamer is, works quite well in Android and iOS and so on. So might not be so hard to have it. But yeah. Yeah. Anyone else? Okay. So thank you very much.